I was in a rehearsal this past December for a show, and the PM came out to me and said, hey, the rig really sounds great, I'll walk the room, the coverage is great, but it doesn't look great. Why in the world do you have your top three boxes spraying all over the back wall? I thought rule number one in sound system design was to point speakers at people, not walls or the floor, right? So I'm gonna talk you through today exactly how I ended up with this line array design and why oftentimes, yes, you do end up wasting speakers on the back wall in order to get the coverage that you want. My name is Michael and I love helping you level up your audio skills so you can build a career that you love. And today we're gonna to talk about why most line arrays don't look like what they're actually doing, how to transition your thinking from viewing line arrays as a bunch of boxes to more so like some composite subsystems of speakers, and also what key data points do you need to be looking for in your line array designs to make sure coverage is actually where you expect it to be, not just what it looks like like in a design without any mapping. But before we jump in today, I've got a gift for you. It is my audio math survival spreadsheet. So I've got that right here. And it is a spreadsheet with a ton of different calculations in it that help you get real results in the field with sound system design. But today we're gonna to be using my ABCD line array planner. This is adopting Bob McCarthy's approach and making it a really easy visual approach to planning line arrays when you don't have software right in front of you or if you're just wanting to ballpark some figures. So that's at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit along with a, a lot of other great audio tools or you can get it at the link below. Let's jump right into why I'm a crazy man and think that you should point your speakers at the back wall in your line arrays. I like to have a both and approach when teaching sound system design. It's great to have prediction software, to read the books, understand the physics, until it's grounded into actually getting a rig in the air, taking measurements, getting your hands dirty, and actually listening to what you designed is a whole different thing. Getting a mix on your own rig really tells a lot about what's going on. So I wanna show you that full arc I was able to go to on a past show that I designed flew, mix, and took measurements on this past December in Bud Watneria, the basketball palace of mid-America. I live in the northwest, northwest corner uh, of Arkansas and the U of A is there and they have their graduations. So this was in December and I'm gonna walk you through the actual house rig, what I got to fly, jump into the design file, show you the measurements and get dive a little bit deeper into line array theory and how where these top boxes that yes, I did have spraying on the back wall were actually doing me a favor by coupling and making sure my back row could hear. So let's jump into the show scope here. These were flown EAW rigs. I had these back to turned off because every there was a big curtain that was raised up and there was no seating here because we didn't want everyone looking at people behind the curtain. But so these four on the front and sides covered over here to the main bowl, the top bowl, and all over here. So I had a time align my rig to that, which was a, uh, a real fun process in and of itself. There are also some delay speakers up top. But what I was responsible for bringing in with the production company that hired me were these HDL 6As. I had 12 per side, a cute little K12 center fill. Then along the front uh, of the stage, I had four CP8s, a little nice small 90 degree speaker. So this is what I had to cover the entire floor. So from the front row, along the side, all the way to the front of house, off to where the screen here and here. So this is my coverage area. And I felt good with a 100 degree wide box to be able to cover it horizontally, but I had to fine tune the vertical coverage to make sure everything sat right. Here's the box before I went in the air. There's dual sixes and a compression driver. I've been really happy with these, gotten to fly them on a lot of shows, but I only had one drive line to the box. So one XLR input and then daisy chain through all of them. So that meant I could not EQ specific zones of the rig in the air. It was just one signal and away we go. So I really had to get it right with the array geometry, not just strong arm it with EQ later. So yes, I can verify that this top box, if we draw a straight line, was pointed more or less at this top bleacher that wasn't pulled out, and the bottom one was here just in front of what was going to be the first row. So how I used to design line arrays before I started to dive in and <laughs> understand a little bit more what I was doing was that, hey, the back row, uh, let's say it did stop at this gray line, let's make the top box, Point at the back row. Let's say this is the front row. 
let's take the bottom box, point it at the bottom rail, and we'll fill in the middle with the rest of the boxes. That seems pretty easy, right? You, In any other setting, you would just point a speaker at your audience and be off to the races. But since we have the physics of sound working specific ways, we put a lot of sources closer together, we can bend the coverage, especially in the top end, 1K and up, to uh, where we want it to go, depending on how we put the line array together. So let's jump into a little bit more of line array theory here. I've got my design file pulled up. This should look familiar. And yes, here's the top box. And it's pointed over. I hit, have here number six, which is a little probe I have at the very back row. And then number one is at my front row. So the bottom box is pointed here in front. So yes, I'm overshooting uh, my audience. If you want to know more about that specifically, Merlin Van Veen has a great article uh, where he jumps on to why this is exactly more or less any box or any frequency that has a similar source within a third of a wavelength is going to couple together. So any boxes that are outside of that won't. So you start to get start to get fall off in the array. So if you if you just aim this top box at somebody, it's not getting the full SPL of the rig. Uh, and with this situ with this, it's more of like a mid range frequency to be able to have a third wavelength that long. But right now I'm actually concerned with high frequencies. So let's jump over to a beautiful graphic that really made all this make sense to me, also from Merlin Van Veen. This is in his article, uh, Pick Your Battles. It's about uh, the beaming frequency. That's beyond our scope today. But he has array with an A, B, C element, elements. So this is three boxes in the A element, three boxes in the B element, and two in the C. So we can see here that if this is the front row where this red microphone is and the blue in the back, this would fall and have coverage and take care of all these. But you can see here that yes, the top box is pointed above the background. Why is that? Because the top box isn't just a solo top box. It's functioning as a part of this A element. So he has all of these working together. So he has three boxes at a three degree total splay. So it's three boxes and in between them is one degree. So it's the top box, one degree, middle box, one degree, and that's an element. And what's highlighted in yellow here is a hinge. So this is the, and between the third and fourth box, there's a splay angle and we move on to our B element. And so this is three boxes at two degrees, which equals three times two is six. So that's, now we've doubled the amount of space. So if we have three line ray boxes and one's really tightly coupled like this, they're gonna overlap a lot in the top end and it's gonna focus that energy and go far. It's what, how we make line arrays throw. But if we take that same amount of energy, instead of focusing it like a laser, it's just like taking a flashlight and making all the light fan out. Yes, you get more over the room, but it's less intense. So three boxes at a very tight one degree splay is like a sniper rifle. And then here in the bottom element, let's pretend we have three boxes all at a 10 degree splay. They're much more fanned out. So we're spreading out that energy more. So in a five to one range ratio, which is what we have here, in Merlin Van Veen's example, it was also the same range ratio I had in my University of Arkansas gig. We're asking this A element, excuse me, I'll learn how to drive screen brush sometime. It's throwing five times as far as, as this bottom one. So you can think about it, either I need to make the top box really tight so it can throw farther, or I need to make the bottom boxes spread out its energy so it's not coupling and making this sniper rifle that's like pummeling the first row. So that's how we can shape the high end or basically 1K and up where the waveguides and the array become custodians to make it focus and tighten up and get, get all the way to the back since it's having to overcome the inverse square law or losing energy going to the back row versus someone who's in the front row who doesn't need that amount like of high SPL coming right at them. I was able to recreate this diagram for another HDL6A rig I made. And this is what I used on the first Friday sound system design walkthrough. I'll put a card right here or here. I'm not sure what's going to pop up, but it'll link you to that if you want to see another rig, outdoor rig that I was able to put into play. So this is a four to one range ratio. 
So it's throwing four times as far all the way to the back versus the front. I have to overcome that. So I have two boxes at one degree, two boxes at three degrees, then two at seven. So Merlin Van Veen differs from Bob McCarthy in that the range ratio is four to one. Uh, Bob would say, make sure the display ratio, AKA these numbers right here are also four. So you would have the bottom boxes at eight degrees. So two times four is eight, but the coverage ratio in Merlin Van Veen would actually make it to where you want double that. And this has to do with high frequencies being approaching cylindrical wave shape on uh, a wave front shape in line arrays and low frequencies are more spherical. It's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today, but just know that if you have a coverage ratio, basically your elements uh, within your A versus your bottom one, the same as your range ratio as a multiplier, you're in good shape. You can go up to double that. So how would you plan for this? And this is why I made in my Audio Mass Survival spreadsheet a ABCD line array planner. So this is this rig that from the UVA commencement right here, all these boxes, I have them here with these same splay angles and was able to plan it out. I have it color coded. You just choose which array, part of the array it's in. It'll change colors and just makes it easily, uh, makes it visual uh, for you able to see what's going on before you jump into your software and you can start planning. And it's going to also tell you your total splay, even before you open up the prediction software. Uh, because sometimes you need to have a very large spread of like, here would be like a 90 degree coverage, which you don't have to do very often. But this ended up being a 40 degree spread and was able to cover what's going on. So I had four elements here, all at one degree spread. So that's four degrees. And then four at three degrees two at five degrees, and then two at 10 degrees. And this all added up to being a four times one is four degrees, and then two times 10 is 20. So that was a five X multiplier between my A and D lining up with my five to one range ratio. So let me show you how this works and what it'd be visual, visually in here in Ease Focus 3, is I can turn on the A element of my right array only, and you'll see the SPL map. And we see that this top element, even though the top box is here pointed above what's going on, we see the A element is focused and pointing right through the middle right here at number six is what I wanted. I want to focus that top box right in the middle to go as far and fast and hard as it could to get to the back. But now if I turn on this and then off our other guy, we can see this is the whole array working together to distribute the SPL. And I was happy with the frequency response front to back, blue is our front row, uh, green number six is the back. If I make this little helper here, if I go to 116 and drag this down to 60B, and I drag this across, I can see front to back that it stays within the 60B window all the way from 250 it breaks here and then all the way on up. So I want even tonal uniformity front to back. So again, I aimed the middle of the four boxes of my L A, L A element at the back, not the top box. Now let's take a look at the measurements I got in the field to see if like, hey, this is all great. From a design perspective, what'd you actually get? So yellow is my front row, purple is my back row, and my target trace here is a plus or minus 3 dB to give you perspective. And I was able to evil, even able to get it to rise evenly in the low end. The only EQ I did on the array was across the whole thing. And it was a low shelf bringing down some of the low end. And then it moved here through the center. And I was very happy with how closely they tracked from front row to back row. So again, this is a 5X increase in distance. And here from 1K to 8K, which is the range I like to find the most amount of tonal uniformity in is the most important to me is really tracking. The only thing is the back row, we have a pretty severe drop off <laughs> after 8K and I would have loved it. Maybe have some EQ for the top end to help with that. And it was just a long way to throw. Uh, we don't want the top end above there to be exactly equal with the front row because that makes it seem like the rig is much closer to us than it actually is. So if we hear a bunch of reverb and a lot of top end, our brains get confused. So anyway, so that were those were the actual results I got in the field front to back with this exact di design file with wasting two boxes on the back. 
Okay, let's recap and here's some of the takeaways. So yes, I am asking you to waste your top couple of boxes if you're using the ABCD line array approach. You're making subsystems within the line array and pointing the center of a subsystem at the back row to get the most bang for your buck from an SPL perspective. They're tightly coupled and overlapping, so they're gonna throw farther. So you're using group think, not just in individual boxes where it's pointed to decide where you're pointing the rig. You don't have to use the ABCD method, uh, but I think it's just helpful to have in your back pocket. I know L Acoustics or D&B or anybody uh, isn't necessarily huge on it. I don't see that in their design software. I've used both of their systems and they sound phenomenal. And I'd be curious to hear from their engineers what they think about Bob McCarthy's approach. And he works for Meyer Sound, just in case you don't. Uh, but that's been a really helpful and pragmatic way to break down what's going on in the rig. The, the front row, is lastly is always closer than the back. So the, the, the inverse square law helps us out when geometry does not. So being able to know predictably that, hey, for every doubling of distance, we're gonna lose 6 dB is a great shorthand for figuring out how hard do I have to bend the array or couple the array to really make sure I get even tonal uniformity front to back. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know below how you put the ABCD line array approach into practice. Uh, how has it worked for you? Under these little tweaks from Merlin Van Veen about uh, coverage ratio versus range ratio, how have you tweaked it to make it part of how you design line array systems? Don't forget about the uh, uh, the audio mass survival spreadsheet. I've got a ton of great calculations in there, including the line array planner. My name is Michael. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.